Bonjour, it's me, the great Galimo. Just thought to talk French since I'm doing a bit of a culinary vlog at the moment. Right, the weather's getting cold in it, and uh, I'm sure that some of you don't want to be eating salads. Some of you, like me, probably live on your own, and you might not be very good at cooking. So I'm going to show you how to make a really nice meal um, that anybody could make, whether you've cooked before or not. It is simple and it's lovely. So let me just run through the ingredients first of all. You need a plate full of potatoes. I'll just leave it on that so you can count how many there is. Um, using some Brussels sprouts, some sliced mushrooms, but you could use button ones and cut them yourself, ordinary vegetables and bean casserole mix. Now you can use whatever you want. Um, and I've got two chicken uh, breast fillets which I'm going to cut up and what we've also got is some reggie reggie cooking sauce okay so basically what we're going to make is we're going to make a shepherd's pie with a difference the difference being it's nothing like shepherd's pie uh, it's basically um, a chicken casserole but it's not because it's got uh, mashed potato on the top similar to what you do with the shepherd's pie, that's why I call it a chicken ready ready. I've um, prepared the vegetables, as you can see. That's got all the, um, the sprouts, the carrots, the cauliflower, the broccoli in it. And over here we've got the potatoes. So what I'll do is I'll just get a little bit of salt and just put some salt in them. Not much. Salt the spuds. Radio. Just put them on top of those for the time being. Salt these. Not not too much. Always remember, put the spuds, put your spuds on the bottom first. Oops, it is. Let's just take them out. Just put them there. This is the problem with only having a small kitchen. Not enough room to swing a kettle, as it were. Right, kettle's boiled. So fill up the bottom of the uh, steamer with water don't let that boil dry whatever you do otherwise you'll end up with boot food righty on let me just put that over to one side a minute put the potatoes on top of there put the vegetables on top of there put the lid on on top of there there you are, it's on. Um, push that right to the back. Very old um, cooker, this. Looks like for me, lighting appliance. It's a bit knackered, so I've got a new one at some point. Near the gas. We'll light it. Right. You want to leave your veg on for about. Um, well, I'll leave it on for about 30 minutes um, on that setting. Whatever that is. I haven't got a clue. Right, next what we want to do is, we want to get the old wok going, so, front right, put the wok on, so that's the wok on, quite difficult doing this one handed, I'm trying to film with the other hand, and then put a little bit of oil in, splash of oil in, get that sizzling away before we put our, um, Our chicken in. <clears throat> now what a lot of people tend to do is when they put the chicken in, they find that it sticks to the pan. Um, the reason it sticks to the pan is because it's not done. So if you leave it for a bit, just stick it in and just leave it. Don't get, don't get too carried away. And then uh, it all comes right. So while we're doing that, while we're doing that, we'll turn the oven on as well. So we'll put the gyro oven on. So let's put it on to about four, three and a half, four. Right, so that's on. And into that, into that goes the chicken which we've, which we've died. Now I'm not going to stir this up. I'm just going to move it around the pan so it all gets 
so it all gets ready for cooking. You just leave that for a little bit so that it just browns. I'm not trying to cook it, just trying to brown it. What I forgot to tell you is what I've done with the potatoes is I've diced them, I've cut them up into smaller pieces. It's just easier for mashing them up after rather than having big uh, big pieces in there. Okay then guys, as you can see the chicken has gone white so we've, we've, we've browned it or, or whited it if you like, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. Right, to that what I then do is I put in the reggae, reggae sauce. And if you can see, still a bit in the bottom of there. So, what I do is, just put a little bit of water in. Not a great deal. Not a great deal. Put the top back on. Go to shake up and down. Again, rather difficult because I'm trying to do this one handed. And then pour the contents into the see that there. Right, just move that round a little bit. And then what I do then get me um, mushrooms, pour them in like so. And then I'm not going to put all of this in, I'm just going to put some of it in. Put that on there like that. Some of this mixture in here. that into it so we've got a bit of a mess right and once that's done put the top back on being very careful not to keep dropping your camera all over the place by which time the oven will be up to temperature so then we got to put it in so um, how the hell do we do this um, <clears throat> just a minute guys why just put this down okie joke so that is in the oven there so that will be in the oven as long as what the casserole, uh, as what the vegetables are, which is about 20 minutes, 25 minutes left. Time's just gone 25 past four, so we're about um, 10 to, about 10 to, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll get everything out. Right then guys, that's half an hour done, so let's have a look to see what we've got so far then, eh? Right, as you can see, that's the chicken and the um, the bean casserole mix and there's our vegetables so all we do now is uh, put the right thing first of all we put our vegetables because they're, they're partly cooked into the it's dead easy this isn't it but even even Brendan Kennedy can do this you're watching this soon you, you, you tell him to knock this up for you because it's so easy and it's really, really tasty. Right, you can just spoon that round a little bit. Put that in there. <clears throat> that into there. And the next one is the potatoes. Um, this is quite difficult, this. How do we do, how do, we do this? Tell you what, let's push that. Whoops, push that to the back. <coughs> Get this here, and we'll spoon. Okay, sorry about that, guys. The battery just conked out, so I just put a new one in. So on we go, spooning our um, potatoes into the. 
sometimes they make too many so it comes in handy for when you're dropping them on the floor because that's not going in you might want to make rather a lot of potatoes because these are going on the top right guys I just give these a bit of a chop up before I start mashing like that and then <coughs> here we are Mr One Handed again always try and get everything out of the drawer beforehand then you're not faffing about you find a fork that's in the spoon drawer or two forks that's in the spoon drawer there we go there's a spoon right I like butter Christ. this is difficult this. whoever invented two pairs of hands I need I need um, I need another pair of hands this is from the butter right so far right as you can see I like I like butter. So a nice a nice unhealthy dollop in and it's fell over again. Right, we'll pick it up in a minute guys. Oops, sorry about that. Right, in in the butter goes. Right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mash this up so I'll come back to my when I've just mashed it up. And that's that's a masher. That's what I'm going to use. So right then, look. guys. As you can see, it's all nicely mashed up, and the uh, butter's been added. So th then it's just a case of spoon it on and make a nice topping. Again, I'm making it look hard because I'm just doing it with one hand, and it's quite difficult. Okay, doke. As you can see, that's all on top. Now all that, that leaves is the finishing touch and that is some cheese. Now usually I use grated cheese but I forgot to get some. But I've got the, um, they're not cheese slices at touch, it's sliced cheese. Um, and I, I, you just, I've broken it up and then you sprinkle it on. I suppose you could actually mix it in with your mash if you wanted. Um, I like uh, farmhouse cheddar. It's very very nice. So that's on. Put as much or as little as you want on it. And again, just using one hand is a bit of a, a disadvantage. Righty-o. And then what you do is you put your oven up to um, gas mark four and bang it in there for about 20 minutes, and then hopefully. It will be done, so <clears throat> join me in 20 minutes guys and we'll, uh, we'll have a look and see what Ok then, done. so uh, now this is what you've all been waiting for. This is the finished result of my cooking, what anybody can make. You ready for it? Here we go. So this is Chicken Reggae Reggae Shepherd's Pie. Right, there it is. Um, as you can see, there's a rut left as well. So that'll do me for um, tomorrow. <laughs> Probably the day after as well. So, you watching this? This is dedicated to you, Brendan Kennedy. Let's see if you can make something like this. Okay, pal? Okay, guys? Thanks a lot. Bye now.